Hello everyone, be it this Flopula here, hope you're having a fantastic day. Last week we talked about aphantasia, the condition of being unable to produce voluntary visual imagery in your head. And we mentioned a vividness of visual imagery questionnaire and today we're gonna go through it and just check whether I happen to have aphantasia and you can do it with me and check whether you might be unable to produce visual imagery, although you might have an inkling what your answer might be and so do I, but it's just, um, it might be of value to ju just go through the questionnaire, see exactly where we stand uh, in regards to the well, capacity to produce voluntary visual imagery. Of course, it's a spectrum, so on one, one end you have aphantasia, the complete inability to produce any sort of visual imagery in your head but then on the other spectrum we have you know a very vivid visual imagination and of course each one of us falls on some end I mean not necessarily on the end right on some each one of every one of us falls on some section of that spectrum so that might be of some value to see where we stand in regards to that. Some of you asked last week um, when we talked about aphantasia, um, well, if people can produce well, um, visual imagery in their head, does that mean that they don't dream? Which is an interesting question. So um, I looked a bit into it. Um, and yeah, this seems to be a popular question amongst people. And uh, what's here to note, I think, uh, is the fact that um, well, the, in the paper we mentioned last week, uh, aphantasia was characterized as only something that involves voluntary visualizations and the people who participated in the study, they were still able to have invol involuntary visualizations, which include dreams so the general answer of course it differs from case to case but the general answer would be that if you have aphantasia if you are unable to voluntarily produce imagery in your head that doesn't mean that you are completely unable to have any sort of imagery in your head um, you can still have very vivid dreams according to what people who have aphantasia at least report to be the case. So in case, anyways, this is the questioner. Um, first question, think of some relative or friend whom you frequently see, but who is not with you at present and consider carefully the picture that comes before your mind's eye. The exact contours of face, head, shoulders and body. Um, like I think right now when I when I say that yeah I, I mean <laughs> to me it seems that I see like perfectly clear and lively as real seeing I mean the contours of face head shoulders and body of a person that is is, is close to me but um, do I really I mean how 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 precise how reliable is that metacognition that is going on right so. Um, this questioner relies completely on self-assertion, completely on what you are self-able to cognize uh, that's going on in your brain. And um, yeah, I mean, that comes with its shortages. Um, so yeah, that is kind of the one thing that is, um, you know, making me a bit, um, it's, it's making me a bit, you know, hard to, the process is a bit hard of answering this because of um, because I don't trust my metacognition to that extent, and I'm I keep questioning whether I actually see images clearly and lively as real seeing, or whether I just think that. So that's one um, thing that's bothering me here. But yeah, okay, um, let's just um, see. At least if I can't with this questionnaire get to a you know 
real objective image of what my capacities of visual uh, imaginations are at least i can get to some mm, you know more clear understanding how i myself perceive myself in regards to be able to produce mental imagery so let's go on characteristic poses of head attitudes of body and yeah i mean the same I, I think that is perfectly clear and lively as real seeing the precise uh, carriage length of steps walking um yeah i think yeah I think it's perfectly clear and lively as it's real scene. Although I um yeah, it's perfectly clear. I mean right now it's uh, it, there is a very trippy image of people walking popping up in my head, but uh, I still think that it's perfectly clear and real as you know, seeing the real thing. Uh the different color worn in some familiar clothes, yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Thanks for the donations, by the way. I really appreciate the green tea that I get to buy with your donations. Okay, so visualize a ray. <clears throat> okay, visualize a rising sun. Consider carefully the picture that comes before your mind's eye. Uh, the sun rising above the horizon into a hazy sky. Yeah, no problem. The sky clears and surrounds the sun with blueness. Yeah, sure. Clouds, a storm blows up with flashes of lighting. Yeah, sure. A rainbow appears. I feel, I feel as if I see everything completely as clearly and vividly as um, real life, right? But yeah, how how reliable is that metacognition think of the front of a shop which you often go to consider the picture that comes before your mind's eye the overall appearance of the shop from the opposite side of the road yeah as lively as real life i think a window displaying display including colors shapes details. yeah sure everything is there you are near the edges. I mean, uh, everything is there once they think about the um, um, features that are relevant in my visual representation of a place, of course. Uh, I probably just have the impression that everything is there, but I don't actually see it um, before it's relevant for me, relevant enough for me to actually you know, manifest that feature in that visual image. Mm, but yeah, once once I think it's relevant and I think of it, I think I see it perfectly well. You are ne near the entrance, the color, shape and details of the door. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you enter the shop of the counter, the counter assistant serves you, money change sense. I mean, perfectly. I mean, maybe that's one reason why I love to read books. Um, because what's going on there, I mean, it's as, as, as lively as real life, it's, it's just there, it's, um, yeah, it's, it can be more immersive, more, you know, the images that I sometimes see when I read books, they are more cinematic than anything I've seen in cinema, sometimes it seems like. Okay, finally think of a country scene which involves trees, mountains and a lake. Consider the picture that comes before your mind's eye. The contours of the landscape, um, yeah. The color and the shape of the lake, um, yeah. Finally think of a country scene which involves trees, mountains and a lake. Consider the pictures that comes before your mind's eye. Yeah, well, when I consider the picture, it's... Yeah, it's perfectly lively as real seeing. A strong wind blows on the trees on the lake, causing reflections in the water. Oh, nice. Yeah, I am. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments. How did you answer those uh, this question? Uh, what answers did you put in? Um, you know, let's. I mean, I'd love to have a discussion about it. So, 
just go to the comments let me know about your experience maybe uh, try to elaborate on a bit and we can talk about it uh, okay yeah you have hyperphantasia you have a very vivid and lifelike imagination Arunar, probably hyper fantastic hmm, fantastic huh you fall into the opposite extreme of the spectrum from those with aphantasia. At present, researchers do not know uh, what percentage of the population have hyperphantasia. Please note this assessment only considers the vividness of your visual imagery capa capa capabilities. Oh, capabilities. I don't know English, by the way. Uh, and does not consider other sensory imagery, auditory. Uh, ah, okay. Makes sense. People with hyper. Hey, Fantasia also report experience um, sounds, uh, smell, taste, and other senses in their mind's eye. Uh, can you? Yeah, and that's pretty much it. Huh. Interesting. I, I, I. So it would seem that I, I mean, at least um, self report to have a mental state that is. Um, uh, adequate enough to be called hyperphantasia, but um, yeah, again, like how reliable is that metacognition? How reliable is my assessment that everything that I've just said is actually as alive and vivid as a report? So maybe I just fa failed to, you know, look at the images in my head, um, you know. Uh, scrutinize them enough to you know be able to say that you know wait a minute you know this is not as vivid as real life but failing to um, mm, you know even if I just report that I'm able to see a beach for example as uh, lively and you know real realistic as uh, a real image I mean I'm still comparing that image that I just produced to a memory of a beach and you know, by that standards, I mean, you know, I, I'm just comparing image to image. I don't know. I'm a bit, I'm a bit skeptical towards that assessment of hyperphantasia. But please do, do, do let me know what you put in. Like, what answers did you, you know, give? You know, and. I don't know how did you figure out like how do you know how how do you like how do you know that the images that you've seen in your head are not as uh, lively and you know real as uh, real seeing I mean do you just know that something is off or uh... so yeah let me know in the comments um, and we can talk about it and. Um, Next week, I will uh, bring on a friend that does report to have a quite poor um, capacity to voluntarily produce images in his head. So um, we'll try to, you know, maybe that's where we get some answers. Maybe he even has some sort of aphantasia. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> okay. That's it for now. Um, yeah. Take care. Have a nice day. Um, and yeah, maybe pay some attention to how you perceive the world and how it compares to your visual, you know, impressions that you form in the absence of stimuli, let's say. Okay, bye.